I love to start things. Yet inevitably, it gets to the point where every fiber in my being wants to quit and move on to the next exciting thing, leaving half-finished projects, mostly completed tasks, or ideas that just die out. And I've kind of been avoiding dealing with this until now. I'm sure you know someone like this who is always starting new things, but their list of accomplishments doesn't really seem to grow. Whether it's something small like finishing a craft project or larger like learning an instrument, the problem is still the same. And this isn't a new problem. In fact, Michelangelo was very well known for his inability to finish his sculptures. And yet, we all can most likely think of people that just flat follow through. If they say they're gonna do something, facts are facts, they are gonna do it. So I decided to stalk some of these people and figure out what they were doing differently. And that's when I discovered that there are several keys to unlocking this ability. So in this video, we're gonna look at one of those keys and put it into action and see what happens. Perhaps this is most commonly seen in the field of creatives and artists, where an elaborate idea can be born in minutes and take half of forever to finish. My search drug me through articles, blogs, videos, conversations, and book excerpts before I landed on James Clear, author of Atomic Habits. And he really showed me that this is a, a timeless issue. It's so timeless, in fact, that Greek philosophers such as Aristotle and uh, Socrates actually came up with a word to describe this. Akrasia, meaning to act against one's better judgment. And this is where the first key showed up. And this is the one we're gonna be focusing on in this video. They use something called leverage. What is leverage? Well, it's twofold. We can have either positive or negative leverage. Both are powerful, but they need to be used properly. I'll give you an example. Let's say I'm trying to break a habit. The way that I would apply negative leverage on myself is by linking up not changing to massive, immediate, enormous amounts of pain and at the same time, link massive, immediate amounts of pleasure to changing. Leverage can get us to do some pretty wild things. For example, I leveraged myself into taking cold showers and now I absolutely love every second of it. Whenever there's any kind of change or commitment, there's always leverage at work. But what does leverage fix? Or, or do, like wh why do we need it? You see, there's something called time inconsistency. It's when your brain values long-term benefits when they are in the future, but it values immediate gratification when it comes to the present moment. So we need to find a way to make our future self actually follow through. Let's look at how we can use leverage to do that. The first thing we can use is something called a commitment device. A commitment device is a choice that you make in the present that controls your actions in the future. It allows you to automate your behavior rather than relying on willpower in the moment, such as telling your boss that they should dock your pay unless you finish this project that he or she gave you by a certain deadline. And this this is a very, very powerful tool of leverage because it locks your future self into a decision. Going against that decision will cause so much pain and friction that your future self has to stick with it. And without a doubt, the greatest amounts of leverage that you can create for yourself is the pain from inside versus from outside. Don't get me wrong, external consequences are very, very important, but knowing that you have failed or could fail in the area of your standards for who you are will create an incredible amount of motivation. And one of the ways that we can do that very effectively is by asking what I call pain-inducing questions and pleasure-inducing questions. So pain-inducing questions might be something like, what will this cost me if I don't follow through? Or what has this already costed me, you know, mentally, physically, emotionally, something like that. Or we can appeal to the fact that we will oftentimes do more for others than we will for ourselves and ask something like, what will this cost the people that I care about if I don't do this thing? Or what will be the negative repercussions 
for them if I don't follow through. And so there we have something kind of pushing us away from where we want to go. But now we wanna ask pleasure inducing questions, which are kind of out in the future saying, if you do this, then this will happen. So it kind of pulls you in. So now you have, you have, a, you have a push. And then if we ask these other questions, now we have a pull. So you have kind of both sides of it, which creates powerful, powerful combination. And this may be things like, you know, if I follow through, how will that make me feel about myself? Or what other things will I be able to accomplish if I go ahead and do this? Or if I follow through on my commitment? Or we can pull in again, the people that we, in our lives that we care about and ask, you know, how would the people I care about benefit from me accomplishing this task or following through on this commitment? And the, the thing that, that I found or that people kept saying, which we haven't tested this, <laughs> tested this out yet, right? We're, we're getting there. But what they kept saying is you can create motivation for almost anything if you have strong enough questions. So at this point in the research, I just kind of sat back and I was like, wow, like that's, that's, that's really interesting. Like, I, I could see how that would work, you know? And then I was like, yeah, I'm gonna have to put this to the test, aren't I? <laughs> so I was trying to think, you know, what could I use to like put this to the test? And the first thing that popped in my mind was I had one of those like doctor patient, you know, interactions with my chiropractor where he was like, you didn't do what I told you, did you? And I was like, no, no, I didn't. Basically he was giving me these exercises of things that I needed to do because I play a lot of sports and there's certain muscle groups that if I don't keep strong, will it'll, it'll really cause injuries and a lot of soreness and just not good stuff. And so like really to play at my best and to avoid injuries, I, I really need to do these things, but they're really, really hard like to set aside time for Like they feel pointless in the moment until like I pay the repercussions of it. Again, that time inconsistency thing. And so I like locked onto this. I was like, all right, this is what we're gonna do. I have a tournament coming up in like a week. This is gonna be perfect. It gives me just enough time to like put this into practice, see if I can do this every single day. So I came up with a list of exactly what I needed to do because we don't want any sort of vague vagueness in, in this. We wanna know exactly what we're doing so we know when it's completed and accomplished or when we fail to do so. There are four exercises that I need to do. There are ankle strengthening exercises, knee strengthening exercises, vertical jump training, and spiking practice. I decided that the ankle and knee strengthening exercises needed to be done every day with vertical and spike training every other day. Now that I have a clear list of what needs to be done, we can move on to removing the time inconsistency. And we're gonna do that by implementing the commitment device that we had talked about earlier. And for this, I didn't think I needed anything like super crazy because I already know that I should do this and I'm planning on doing it anyhow. Just the fact that I'm making a video about this creates a lot of that commitment device. But I decided to come up with another one just to cement it into place. And what I came up with is I will not allow myself to drink any form of caffeine the day of the tournament if I do not do these exercises every single day. Now let's move to the second part of this exercise where we ask pain inducing questions and pleasure inducing questions to make sure that we like to make sure that we have the motivation to actually follow through and, and we know why we're doing it. What will this cost me if I do not follow through? Well, the first thing it's going to cost me is caffeine <laughs> the day of the tournament, which is actually kind of a big deal because like when you play for eight hours, like over the course of a day, having energy is really, really important. That can make or break you know, one of your, one of your games. So that's kind of a big deal. It caused me an injury. Um, I will have less stamina. I'll play worse. I'll be letting my team down uh, because I won't be playing at, at as high of a level as I could be. They won't be able to rely on me like as much as they could if I was trained and prepared. So those are some pretty major things. And notice how those are internal, right? Like at least most of them are. There's injury and stuff like that, but it's like the, like I'll be disappointed in myself if I know that my team cannot rely on me, if I, if I make repeated simple mistakes because of this. So what has this already costed me emotionally, mentally, physically? Really it's only costed me probably physically um, because I've injured myself in the past and it's caused a lot of disappointment and you know letting my team down and being out of play for a number of months. And what will this cost others that I care about if I don't follow through? And this is actually a really, really major one because this is where a lot of my motivation comes from this because I will be letting my team down because I won't be pulling as much weight as the rest of them. And they won't be able to rely on me when they need me. I won't be able to perform at as high of a level 
and I'll be very disappointed in myself. And worse yet, they might be disappointed in me. And we may even lose games and lose our place in the tournament because of my lack of preparedness. Now that we've got something pushing us forward, let's look at what can pull us towards that direction as well. So we're gonna look at pleasure inducing questions. So if I do follow through, how will that make me feel about myself? Well, for one, it's gonna give me a lot more confidence. I'm gonna be able to show up and I'm gonna be ready. I'm gonna be prepared. I'm gonna know people can, can rely on me. I'm gonna have a lot more fun. It's just gonna be totally different atmosphere. What other things will I be able to accomplish if I follow through and achieve this? Well, I'm gonna be more self-disciplined in the future. I'm gonna be able to make a YouTube video out of it, which is pretty awesome, a little added benefit. And um, I'm gonna have a lot more self accomplishment. And the last question is how will the people I care about, how will they benefit from me being, from me following through? And we've kind of obviously touched on this, but I will be able to carry my weight. We may win more volleyball games. We will probably have more fun because we'll be able to be confident in our ability. We'll be able to rely on each other, work together. I won't be the weak link on the team. Um, or if someone else is having a rough time, then I can step up and help take their load. They will be able to trust in my abilities and rely on me more. Those are kind of the, the main big ones. And for these questions, feel free to curb them and change them and structure them however you need to to make them motivate you in the way that you need. And these are really, like these, these are kind of the base, but yeah, like what are the repercussions if I don't do this? What's it gonna cost me? Um, you know, like all, all of that stuff is really important, but you may have to shift it and adjust it to, to fit your specific needs. Okay, um, so that actually went a little bit better than I thought it would. Um, I did not miss any days, uh, so I was able to keep my goal the whole way through. And I'll be honest, the the like the long like the end thing of like you cannot, you know, well for one it was like I wouldn't be able to actually make this video very well if I was like, oh by the way this didn't work. <laughs> um, so that created a, kind of an angle leverage or commitment device. And then the other one was, you know, not being able to have caffeine, which is just kind of a big deal, especially for something like that. I know it's not the best for me. It's not the most healthy and all that. I know. <laughs> and I only had like one experience where I was like literally laying in bed and I like lurched up right. I was like, oh snap, like I completely forgot. So I got out of bed and like did my exercises. So it wasn't nearly as painful as I thought it would be because I clearly defined like, okay, here's the pain this, this is gonna cause me if I don't do it. And so actually doing it in the moment wasn't that hard. It's like I'd already decided, I already made a decision to do it and it was just like, oh, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do it. There was no like, oh, should I or shouldn't I? And you'll notice that this can be applied to like almost anything, like whether or not you're trying to change something about yourself or just like follow through on your commitment, um, not lie to yourself. Like you can apply it in so many areas. And to be honest, I don't think we make not following through painful enough. And most of us already kind of do this without realizing it. Um, but by taking like conscious control, we're able to ensure that our future self doesn't <laughs> doesn't play hooky on us. And if you kind of want to see another example of how this worked, um, check out the video in the center of the screen here where I quit caffeine cold turkey. I used the same technique of creating leverage and all that. I don't really talk about it a whole lot in the video, but if you keep your eye out for it, you'll, you'll see little threads throughout the video of of creating that as I go. 